culture is known worldwide. Quite frankly, there are two beautiful women at the same age, literally icons in their own right and known throughout the world. It is a picture that became infamous in many respects because although it was a brief meeting, as I told you in a previous video, everybody really at that point, particularly in London, while Marilyn Monroe was over here to make her one and only British movie, The Prince and the Showgirl, opposite Laurence Olivier, well, everybody wanted to meet her, including, so it appears, our late and wonderful monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. But this picture really sparked fury, anger, jealousy, and resulting in a lawsuit. As ever, let me explain. Morning, how are you? Nice to see you today. Thank you as ever for your time. Welcome one and all brand new subscribers. Lovely to always say that. And thank you also uh, for your lovely comments about collecting charity records. A lovely lady called Alice posted them on uh, social media as well. And you do, <laughs> you look at them and think, I remember that Rack Record label. It was big, wasn't it? Mickey Most, oh goodness. Takes you right back. Memories are a wonderful thing, aren't they? But I don't know if you've noticed this. When you buy those records now in the charity shops, there's so much more than what you first paid for, aren't they, with your pocket money? Or the money that your mum and dad gave you, you know, your Saturday job or whatever. You think, how come this is suddenly now more expensive than first time around when it was new? and rare then. Back as ever to your royal story of the day. As I said in the intro, this particular picture really did create something of a storm even back in the late 1950s because it was of course Marilyn Monroe meeting Queen Elizabeth II at a Royal Command film performance. Standing alongside her of course was the equally uh, talented and very very debonair Victor Mature. Stuart Granger was there, there were many other big names on the night but all eyes were on Marilyn who apparently had to be sewn into her dress and as you can see in the footage if you've ever seen it uh, the queen tactfully looks down to say hmm uh, <laughs> but apparently the two ladies got on of course they would they were the same age bracket and both were very secure in the roles that they've now created particularly marilyn as the number one international box office sex symbol you know basically the blonde the biggest blonde in the world at this particular point she'd also become an entrepreneur she'd branched out set up her own production company marilyn monroe film productions and her first big thing was of course to make the prince and the showgirl with england's most respected actor Sir Laurence Olivier. Things weren't going too well out at Pinewood though at this particular point let me tell you. She was with her third husband Arthur Miller the celebrated playwright and things weren't going particularly well there. You could see that Marilyn looked incredibly sad meeting the Queen but apparently afterwards said it was one of the highlights of her life and couldn't believe exactly how beautiful the monarch was in the flesh and what wonderful skin. You see everybody has somebody they're impressed by it doesn't matter who they are. Back in Hollywood though, Marilyn Monroe was considering literally suing another blonde. That's right, the also ubiquitous Jane Mansfield, signed by 20th Century Fox as a rival to Marilyn, basically to keep her in check when she wouldn't do the movies that Daryl F. Zanuck wanted her to do. And things truly escalated between the two blondes. And now Tony Curtis verified this particular story for me because obviously he knew Marilyn well, worked with her on the mega movie Some Like It Hot, and basically said that he she couldn't understand why someone would literally replicate someone's image and try and take it off them. This was pre-influencer, you have to remember that. What's more fascinating is this, because as she looked into the opportunity to try and sue Jane for copying likeness, image, mannerisms and voice, well, Daryl F. Zanuck stuck in and decided that he couldn't have the two blondes falling out. Now, what you've got to remember is, as much as you know, you could possibly admire both ladies, and they were both unique in their own ways, if you look at Jane's career, she seemingly did mirror Marilyn's success. You know, Marilyn Monroe starred in The Bus Stop, Jane Mansfield, The Wayward Bus. You get the picture. Of course, Marilyn Monroe met Queen Elizabeth II, and then a couple of years down the line, Jane Mansfield met Queen Elizabeth II. And apparently, according to a very well-placed source, Jane Mansfield's studio over here in London were desperate for Jane to meet the Queen. They felt this was going to be good box office for her movie, The Sheriff of the Fractured Jaw, with the British star Kenneth Moore. And she promised to do some kind of stunt. But of course, at the last moment, it was advised not to do the stunt, and 
perhaps do a reverse of Marilyn and cover up, which is exactly what she did. Now, what happened was that Daryl F. Sanek was very concerned about this getting out into the media. He didn't really want two battling blondes from the same studio falling out, particularly over image rights and money. And he'd already had to give a substantial rise to Marilyn for her Fox contract from the 1953 deal. Now, what was interesting is, according to Tony, uh, Daryl F. Zanuck did the very nicest thing that he could possibly do. Money didn't interest Marilyn, but what did interest her was power. You know, she wanted to have control of her movies. So the bottom line was that he was going to give her executive producer status on her forthcoming four remaining Fox movies. As we now know, that didn't really work out to plan, and the whole deal fell apart, simply because Jane Mansfield's star very soon dropped at 20 20th Century Fox on mega loan outs to other studios and by the time of course this was brought up for Marilyn's big return back to Fox with Lex Mate Love in 1960, she didn't have the power and Zanuck knew it. Now the bottom line was people will say, ah but really where they were rivals, well Jane Mansfield was desperate once again to make sure that she too was pictured with JFK but Marilyn went one further some people said with a liaison and singing happy birthday at the now infamous May 1962 presidential gala. Either way, it does seem strange to think that when Marilyn died, apparently Jane Mansfield said to Tony Curtis, well, I guess it's now just left to me to hold the lantern, dismissing, of course, the likes of Cherie North and Mamie Van Doren. Either way, these two ladies could have become friends, but it literally, according to Tony, all started with this picture, with Marilyn meeting the Queen of England, quite frankly, the most famous woman in the world, meeting the most famous blonde in the world, and the publicity-hungry Jane Mansfield was simply sat in Hollywood wondering how she too could eclipse that and meet the Queen herself. Both ladies were unique in their own way. But it's fascinating to note, isn't it, that the Queen could stir such emotions from two wonderful, talented, beautiful blondes. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.